Hi, I'm Midnight Mule. Welcome to Midnight Mule FPL. And we've just finished game week eight. My net score, I think, is going to be about one point, maybe a little bit worse than one point below average. I took an eight point hit and it was all good fun. And <laughs> so even though I got below average, I've got a red arrow. I can still look at some positives from what's happened this week and look forward to next week, albeit it's two weeks away. So first off, I'll show you how to find some positives from a bad week. So game week eight, as you can probably guess, I look at various websites that must have APIs that plug into the live data. One of my favorites is fplgameweek.com. And on there, there are lots of different views, but you can look at the various leagues you're in and even leagues that you're not in to see how you compare all the live scores, etc. So this is looking at uh, the Midnight Mule League. I'll leave a link in the description if I remember. So currently, at the time of taking the screenshot, so the scores could change slightly if uh, bonuses are changed, but this is pretty much how it is. So top of the Midnight Mule League at the moment is Eric Sanderson. He's on 451, and then you can see the top five there and how that's all going. But like I said, on this site, you can also look at various other leagues and they've made their own content creators league. So I like to look at that. So currently on the content creators, and if you watch YouTube videos, you'll know quite a few people on here. Raptor's at the top. He's certainly one of my favorite. And at the end of his live streams, he tends to hang about for half an hour or more and just talk about anything, not even football, just whatever. So he's a lot of fun. So it's nice for him that he's flying so high just now. And then in joint second place is FPL Harry. He's someone I've watched for a few years. I started watching him uh, when he only had, I think, just over a thousand subscribers or so. But something that amused me about him was he reminded me of Suggs, who is the lead singer of Madness, which is a group big in the 80s. Hopefully he won't mind me saying that. So how to find some positive news from a bad week? Well, if I was in this league, and when you look at FPL Game Week, you look at any league, it plugs you in where you would be. I'd be down in 44th. But Holly Shand, who's someone I watch online, I'm beating her because she's in 48th, albeit I think I had the worst week out of anyone in the league. But at least I'm above her. And I'm above Bruno. I only come across Bruno the last month or two. I think he's only just started um, rebroadcasting things again. But he's very interesting. He absolutely doesn't follow the crowd at all and he's got an excellent sound set up so he's a lot of fun to follow so if you look at a league for example the content creators league you can see how you compare and pretty much every week you should be above some of them and you probably won't score as bad as some of them albeit i was the worst score this week for all of them so my transfers i took an eight point hit this week so i swapped for Farner for trippio because chelsea weren't playing and because I'm short of players, as much as I like Lavia, he's injured just now, so I swapped him for Madison. Liverpool weren't playing, so I swapped Diaz for Bowen, and I swapped Darwin for Mitrovic. And I took a four-week view. So the idea is, if after four weeks, the net result of this is more than eight points, then that was worth doing. If it was eight points, then it's still just about worth doing, because you get a dopamine hit from doing transfers. If it's less than eight points, then clearly it wasn't good. And judging by Fancy Football Hub's predictions, which I talked about in, I think, the previous video, the four that I transferred out were predicted to get 32, and the four that I transferred in after the eight-point hit, i.e. allowing for that, would have been 58 points, so the swing should have been worth it. I thought it might be interesting to map this out over the next four weeks to see whether it was worth it or not. So the four players that I transferred out got zero points this week, the four I brought in got 16 points this week. So the net result at the moment is it's positive eight. But next week, Lewis Diaz and Darwin, who I've sold, they're at home to Brighton. And they could both get a double digit haul potentially. So next week, it may have been a bad move. But by the end of the four weeks, it'd be interesting for me at least to see whether it was worth it or not. So something I would say, my philosophy and my experience is it's worth taking hits if you take a view of, for example, four weeks, you'll find out it can be worth it. And a lot of FPL YouTubers are very reluctant to take a four-point hit and an eight-point hit, etc. And I think that's not always the best approach. But as you saw from a previous slide, most of them are above me anyway. So what do I know? <laughs> so game week nine, looking forward. Now it's another two weeks before game week nine, or nearly two weeks. 
and there's some interesting things going on. So if everything, all the games go ahead, then 10 of my starting 11 have home games. So I'm actually very happy with my squad. So James is away to Palace. But apart from that, Arsenal are at home to Tottenham. I realise it's a North London derby and derbies can be a bit different. But Tottenham defensively haven't been great this season so far. And Arsenal are quite good for attacking. Odegaard didn't play today. Maybe he'll be right next week. So I have Odegaard, Martinelli and Jesus at home. Man United and Man City are playing. So that's another derby. The three Man City players I've got, Edison, Cancelo, Haaland, they're at home. Then I've got Trent at home to Brighton. I've got Bowen at home to Wolves. Madsen at home to Forest, And I've given him the vice-captain armband. That's another derby. I used to live in Leicester for a couple of years. And Leicester and Forest and Leicester and Derby are very much derby games. So that's going to be very interesting. But both Forest and Leicester leak goals. And they can both score goals. So that is probably going to be a nil-nil. <laughs> but it could be high scoring. No one would be surprised if there were like nine goals in that game. And then I've got Mitrovic at home to Newcastle. And on the bench, I'd have Ward. I don't know how long before he's going to get dropped, though, by Leicester. And then Trippier away to Fulham, Perisic away to Arsenal, and De Silva away to Bolton. But there is a chance some of these games may get postponed. And I've seen this in the uh, online on the Express Sun. I think the star may have carried the story as well. But I've taken a screenshot from football.london. And here you can see they're saying Arsenal versus Tottenham, Palace versus Chelsea fixtures could be postponed because of the rail strike action, which means I would lose James again. And then my three Arsenal players, they would all be out as well. And I was thinking about bringing in Zaha, but of course there's no point if he's not playing. Now, it may be that it goes wider and they actually scrap all London games, in which case I would also lose Bowen and I'd lose Mitrovic. Yes, that's not so good. So then I would have potentially five of my first choice 11 playing. Of the bench players, I'd lose Perisic, North London derby. And then Trippier's going down to London to play Fulham. Ward might get dropped, so he's not much of a reserve keeper anyway. And then I'd be left with De Silva for my only bench player. And he's like a one or two point player. He He might score one or two more goals this season, but he's not really worth having. So I, I might have to make an awful lot of transfers next week. So if these strikes do go ahead and the strikes may get called off, there may be some sort of resolution. It looks like the most likely game to get called off would be the North London derby. So Arsenal wouldn't play in week nine. Week 10, they've got Liverpool. 11, they're away to Leeds. And then 12, they're already blanking. because that's Man City. I could comfortably get rid of two of the Arsenal boys at least I'd probably keep Martinelli because I've got too much money invested him in him with the amount he's gone up and then Man City is the other team that is blanking in week 12 so I would probably get rid of one or two of my Man City players to fund getting in new players so I don't know for sure yet what I would be doing but I may get rid of Cancelo, Odegaard, Jesus at least possibly some others as well not necessarily anyone on my bench, but maybe. So there we have it. Week 8 cost me 8 points, below average score. But at least I'm beating a couple of people still in the uh, Content Creators League. The um, strike action, hopefully if there are postponed games, we'll be hearing about it in the next few weeks. A lot of managers will be wildcarding in game week 9. So if there are games called off, at least they can adjust for that. Those managers that wildcarded in game week 8 they could be in trouble according to which games are actually postponed. So maybe we'll see some free hits next week, depending on the number. So there we have it. That was my game week eight and looking forward to game week nine. Of course, game week nine will look very different in 10 days time and I'll probably put out a completely different story. But that's my initial thoughts. Thank you very much for watching. <laughs> and I suspect you had a better game week than I did, but it's all good fun. Thanks. Bye.